Hello and welcome to another episode of Word Up. I'm here with my good friend Ian Thompson, Hello aka that. Tupac reincarnated. That's me. <laughs> Just as we were about to start rolling, Ian whacked us funny bone. And uh, <laughs> it's the only funny bone Ian can ever hit him on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> joking <laughs> fuck me i'm in agony and i'm just getting slagged straight off the bat but i was saying that uh it's called your funny bone for those of you who don't know because that little bone is called your humorous but there was, ian there has, was nothing humorous about it when i whacked no, it off that chair. that's i used to think it was called the funny bone because there was nothing fucking funny about the, you, did you ever see whenever you hit it and you used to go <laughs> you don't do that i thought weird. it was because it feels funny yeah it's like it an electric shock Aye, or something, isn't it? Weirdo. But Ian was telling me that this wee part of your hand here is called... The anatomical snuff box. Right. There's actually a wee line. I thought just, you were waking me up, but Just it's not. there, right there. Mm -hmm. So people used to put the snuff on there. Get away. So save there your you £20 go. notes or fivers, because let's be fair, you are all fucking stinkers. And just uh, this wee thing here. Yeah. Just don't don't use plastic straws for snorting cocaine. I once saw somebody in, I'll not say the bar, but there was these fellas and they were doing wee bits of coke in the bar, but they were doing it off a pound coin. And I thought, that's really like fucking bringing it down. And you know the way people go, ah, you can only do it with five hours, you're meant to do it with 50 pound notes. They were doing it with pound coins. I was like, I've done it off worse. <laughs> <laughs> Penny. I had this pound of cocaine. Man. But you know another thing. You know um, what I discovered while we're on the subject of anatomy. You know that little part. Do you know your perineum, aka the barsh yep. for a man? Your stinker's bridge. <laughs> Stinker's bridge! Oh my god! Stop it, that is brilliant. Your gooch. Your gooch. It? Do you know that little part in there, inside that, is called the pouch of Douglas? Like, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's referred to. Who's in... Douglas? <laughs> exactly! I went in, whenever I was in the hospital, they were like asking, Do you have any pain in your pouch of Douglas? And I was like, Say who now? What? Pouch of Douglas. It's That's where, like, Blood can gather there and it can be getting a sore. It'll poke you in your pouch of Douglas, you dirty beast. <laughs> you're like, you're talking about my stinker's bridge. Your stinker's bridge, your taint, isn't that one? Your taint, that's another one, eh? That's yeah. another one. Tainted love. Taint was just another word for dude. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think taint Mickey talks about here. his taint all the time. That's a, where I think I first came across taint. A not taint. that way. Um. Like some people will use it as like an insult, you know, they'll call someone a taint. It's kind of mm. like, well, Londoners, well, Curtis has heard of it before he was like, yeah, if you're saying that's you're funny. taint. Did, what's his opinion on twat? Because that's like, you see in the north of England, mm -hmm. I think like a twat is a JJ. Yeah. Whereas I think down south, a twat is just like a twit or a silly willy. A person. Yeah. 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 Silly willy! <laughs> You're uh, silly Billy! An Egypt. <laughs> I, I consider it like a wee bit below an Egypt. Yeah. You know That's I mean? one. Yeah. I but You're see when I hear twat I would think of I a think, foof look. Yeah, I think funny. Oh do you well, when I, I hear twat. Remember years and ago. a twat would like I, I think baldy funny whenever I think twat. <laughs> Growler. Now that would be poof. Money box is a baldy funny. Money box. Or oh money my, box. Yeah. It's just like, like your action man groove. Um, now I remember years ago, one of my mates coming to my mom and dad's house and picking me up, and my mom says, "I can't remember what he did," and she was like, "Chris, you're an awful twat." Right? <laughs> and like we were pissing ourselves laughing, and then went out and I think I stayed up in Belfast for like three days drinking or something. Yeah. And I got home on the Sunday, and I had an awful shock. After you left on a Friday night, and I was like, well, she goes, your father told me what a twat is. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I'm sure it's just like a twit. Yeah, you're an awful twat. Yeah. Can you please tell your friend to come round so I can apologise? I know. Do you know how she discovered that's what it was called? Your dad went, get your twat out. <laughs> Let me put something in your money box. <laughs> I had, um, had a similar thing with my ma before because we were in the car one time and we were driving somewhere. And you no, know, like the fields or something, it, it stunk. She was like, the silage. me smell. She was like, it smells like somebody dropped a dude in here. <laughs> and we sort of wet ourselves, and we we're like, what the fuck did you? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, 
a doot. It's like yeah. somebody dropped a doot and she just wouldn't stop saying doot. Oh and, my I was go- gosh. and she's like, what's funny about that? My friend's mad like, before she actually said, um, her dad was leaving the room and she went, where are you going? Are you going for a pulley? And I near sp- A pulley? I went, <laughs> what? What did your mommy just say? Dear daddy, are you going for a pulley? And she went, she was just sitting, and she's, this woman is so, so nice, like really, really lovely, you know, doesn't swear or anything. And I went, she just basically asked her dad, was he away <laughs> for a shit. wank? Oh, is that a pulley rather no, than a poo? I thought a pulley was like, crack him on pulley. off. And I went, I just couldn't stop laughing. And her friend was, my friend was like, well, what's your, what's your problem? And I went, your mask said your daddy's away for a pulley. And <laughs> her mummy ended up, no, Bruna, a pulley. A pulley is a pee. When you're going for it, I was like, how the oh fuck did you deduce God. that? Because no. See, in my head, I was thinking, no old toilets had like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, probably yeah, what it is. Pulling. But I thought like. Maybe you didn't flush piss, so you flush shit, so you, you've had to pull it. Right, uh, pull it. It. If it's yellow, it let it mellow. If it's brown, flush yeah, it down. Yeah. There's friends of mine do that. I have oh, really? to say, it's like every time you're in their house and you go for a piss and you open the lid and you're like, fuck No, me. I don't want to see that Gatorade yeah. in the bottom of the fucking toilet. I know, toilet. I know. Do you know what I mean? It would smell as well. The see, ammonia. sometimes in work, there's nowhere for us to hide to have a piss. Like, if you know, most of the time it's fine. You can just... Mm-hmm. Go in the fuck. I'm an expert at it. Like, is this while I, you're landscape gardening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not while I'm on stage. Yeah. <laughs> just like he's just going to turn around and piss into the limelight, yeah. But it, it did become a bit more tricky during the first lockdown because everyone was working from home. But sometimes. How do you do landscape gardening from home? No. Give us your window boxes. No, the people were at their house while we were working. Oh, right. <laughs> so you couldn't take a shit on their lawns or anything. <laughs> But, um, no, so we have like an ensuite watering can in the back of the van. An uh, ensuite? Yeah. Oh my God, I love it. So you it. just have to jump into the back and piss in the watering can and then discreetly tip your piss. But... Samuel, the begonias are burning. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> like you, Why does it smell you like your in. stinker's bridge? <laughs> <laughs> when you're like, your dog's man, they already done the garden. It's like, we don't have a dog. <laughs> yeah, I went to... We... I've established now that Sean and I'm just like are on the same wavelength. Kindred spirits. Yeah, because I that I was thinking that I was like, imagine going there's big dog shit in your garden. There is no dogs allowed in this area. Do you know what I mean? There, there are fucking gardens I've worked in where there is no dog, and you would oftentimes come across feces and go, "What is going on here? Like, do they really dislike the way I cut their lawn?" So no way. So. How do you tell the difference though? Because I had somebody on Facebook the other day that was talking about how. It's definitely a human shit yeah. beside her car. And I was like, how do you know? Well, there's ways of, of knowing. I stepped them on one night and I'm sure it was human shit <laughs> for various <laughs> reasons. All right. So firstly, the reason I stepped it because I'd like gone down this wee alley to have a piss. Right. And then fucking brand new boots as well. Oh, and no. And no I, way. I, re- I could feel this sort of squelch and then... I'll, uh, Put my fucking torch to see is that a shit? And was and there, there somebody lying there with their no, beds down? No, but there was a bit of <laughs> tissue beside it. Oh, 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 oh dogs don't wipe. <laughs> there's other places where we would like sort of cut hedges and car parks and all, right. and you know that there's homeless people in the area. Yeah. And there was these big dumpster bins, and I remember pulling them out, and there was just you could tell. Dumpster. Someone has <laughs> been hiding behind here to take a shit, like. Well, it is called a dumpster after all. Exactly. That's why. Yeah. But here, you can get. I can understand that if if you're homeless, you gotta go. You gotta go. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can say what you want about the homeless people because they're not going to watch this. They don't. <laughs> they don't have cat shit. Cat but, shit is worse than dog shit as a gardener. Because at least the dog, will just do it on the fucking lawn or whatever. Oh, but yeah. cats it's will bury barrier. it, so you'll be doing a bit of weeding, oh, and then no. you just get the smell. And then ammonia and stuff. Apparently, cat shit's really like cat shit's more. Dangerous as well, isn't it? Why are we talking about the different kinds of shit? That's no, all started by your mate's dad going for Happy a pulley. Happy Saturday night, everybody. Going for a pulley. Happy Saturday night. I hope hey, you're all. content. That's why you listen. <laughs> Premium content, yes. I'm the number one. He's my number two. It's <laughs> me. Do you want to hear this week's word, actually? Yes. We'll get it out of the way. Yep. Hit right. me with it. You punch off. Um, Fucking Susie Dan bastard. Sniff, sniff my 
anatomical snuff box. I thought you were going to say my tent. <laughs> my, my, what do you call it, bridge? Stanker's bridge. <laughs> or what's the, the Stanker's correct? bridge, I'm pretty sure that's at the forest in Lanadine. Perennium? Perennium? Perennium. 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 Perennium
in the washing machine for too long. Like, say you leave them in overnight, uh, yep. and you take them out and you go, you can be fooled by thinking that they smell nice, but the second you put them on the radiator or whatever, they'll start uh, smelling, yeah. and you go, nah, off the fuck, back in the washing yep. machine. I hate that when you realise you've left stuff in overnight. See, I, um, I, I lived in the Holy Lands for a while, and our... Trump! <laughs> our, our washer Troublemaker! Dryer, our washer dryer. See when you put it um on like a full wash, see at the end where it was meant to do like the spin. Mm-hmm. Ah. Instead of doing a spin, all the water Which would be set. released back into the fucking All the stinky water? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was broke and we asked to get it fixed a load of time. He came out and all a load of times and says, Ah, it's a fix and then Next time you went to use it, same thing happened. Mm. And we done it. Uh, put it on. I was like, hang on, try this. And like, so set going down to like bringing clothes over to my mas or, you know, mm-hmm. going down to the laundromats or something. And so I went, I'm going to try this again. He says, that should be it now. And I done it. And the fucking thing filled up like right to the top this time. Oh. I was going to see if I open that. The whole kitchen's going to be flooded with all that stinking water. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and not only that, I had to run out and we were going somewhere for the weekend we came back on a Monday and it stunk stunk to high heavens that's the most noisome smell actually yeah. whenever have you ever I'll tell you what you should have done now the you know the wee plug at the bottom of your washing machine like underneath it there's a wee flap usually and you lift it and unplug it and that's how you like unblock your tube and your washing machine that is the most noisome smell like whenever Curtis does that, I have to leave the house. I'm like, that's fucking, and it's always my hair clips that blocks it up. It's there, stinking. There is actually another one that I remember. Like when I worked in a state agency in Scotland, like it was during the fucking credit crunch, and there was loads of houses being repossessed, mm. and like most of the time, the people that the lived, good old days, I the people when you that, could afford a the house people it. that lived there would have usually cleared it out, but other times people just like just to basically abandoned it, right? Yeah. So the fucking bailiffs would go down, change the locks, and disconnect all the water so there was no burst pipes or anything, yeah. and switch the electrics off. Mm-hmm. And they were meant to do like they were meant to clear everything out, and sometimes because there was like so many houses being repossessed, mm. they had the switch everything off and come back the following week to do it but mm. I remember one like where there was a load of meat had been left in the freezer oh. with the door shut and then like going around and oh. whoever I was with opened the fucking door and the smell of it like would have made oh. you sick was it just maggots and stuff I, Not even. I didn't look Not I just fucking shut the door again so even if you like are defrosted in a freezer and you leave the door <laughs> closed mm. it just traps and gets like stinky yeah. moldy air yeah they say that you should <laughs> use, like clothes they curtis informed me that whenever they were um growing up there was this advertisement going about that was like actually publicly funded because it was talking about kids like never get inside a freezer oh I... and it was like i was going why would you even need to be told that and he went no because whenever you used to play like the dumps and stuff oh I... or like the tip if there was a couple of kids that like died because they got inside a freezer. It would be a vacuum, then they couldn't get out. And I was like, did this really happen? But then again, whenever I was growing up, there was this whole big fucking health warning about shitting in people's kettles. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't public information on that, was it? Well, it was just, it was a, a word of mouth warning. Not that you shouldn't have fucking known, but uh, it was a load of, a load of fellas. And they were talking about here, did you see, like, uh, there's this whole big thing going about. The days before Facebook, when mornings were just like, you know, your ma writing on fucking back of a note and lighting a candle for you. But it was like, do not shit in people's kettles. Because there was this thing at parties where Uh, you would go to somebody's house for a laugh and then some tramp would shit in the kettle so that the next day, whenever they went to boil the kettle, you would just smell shit all over the house. But then apparently somebody got violently ill, like somebody died because of this, because of like the fucking E. coli in the shit. And I just remember being at a party before and like all these guys having a conversation about how you shouldn't shit in the kettle. And I was like... (laughs) Is that not obvious? You're coming home and like your dad's like, Bro, I'm here! (laughs) Where were you? Where that shitting in kettles were? (laughs) 
<laughs> Who's that shitting in the well, kettle? <laughs> a mate of mine had a party one time, like, and it was weeks later. They were like, what the fuck is that smell? And somebody had, like, run up the stairs to puke, but there was somebody in the, the bog. Oh. And he, he just looked around, and there was a fucking vase of dried flowers, lifted the flowers out, puked, and put the flowers back in and left it. Oh, oh man. Bastard. You know that it's a good party, though. When shit like that happens. I know. But not in your house. Yeah. You want to be able to go. Yeah. Do you remember Some, that party? Sometimes you just feel bad. Mm. Not even like past the point of feeling bad. You're like. I thought you were about to say porn awful. there. Like when you're watching porn <laughs> in somebody's <laughs> computer. <laughs> I, w- I went to a party one time. Like got invited the one up on like the Crumlin Road. And walked in. And they're got fucking. Arrested. <laughs> they're. It was a big fancy house, like, and they had ripped the felt off the pool table. The head. There was a pool table? There was a pool table in the house. That's was it your ma's house she went yeah. to boarding school? Yeah. They, they had broken the trampoline. Mm. Like, um, they had stole the computer. I don't feel bad for these people. They had a fucking trampoline and a snooker table. We were <laughs> lucky if we had a fucking the half bath, a pool here. There was, like, a ceramic bath upstairs. And it was sliced in half. Fuck. Oh. Um, oh, the the sateen was like sliced. Of oh like a knife and all. Are you that. sure the Brits weren't just in turning the place over? And what it sounds like? The worst one I heard. There was like. Uh, <laughs> oh well. <were they? laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm saying that's what it was like. Uh, there was one of the kids in uh, my son's primary school class. They had a, a like a party for parents and kids a few years ago. Yeah. And it was Halloween and everyone was like running out out the back on the trampoline and all and they had a cream carpet and all the kids were coming in and the carpet was ruined. But you see the mum and dad of the house, they were steaming and they were like, yeah. ah, fucking let them enjoy themselves. We've had worse things happen to the parties than the carpet getting destroyed. And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, well, we've an older, like the dad had a, an older son from a previous marriage. And he said about how uh, they went away for the weekend and came back and I said just like as soon as you pulled up it was evident that there'd been fucking chaos going oh on in the house God. but he said he went in and he said I don't even know how this is possible but there was steps missing from their staircase <laughs> get away <laughs> he, said, he said like he had to do like big fucking strides <laughs> over these steps that weren't there baby he, trapped you sure Macaulay Culkin didn't he jump said he, he got turned in. up to the fucking party with an angle crash <laughs> No, I'm taking this step home. Yeah. Um, but he, like, apparently the uh, the teenage son... We have to like, take steps to prevent a, this. Apparently, <laughs> apparently he was just in his bedroom fucking rocking back and forward, like, terrified of what was going to happen. Uh, Get away! He was... Oh, my God. My my cousin step used to... Tragedy! Like, <laughs> steps! <laughs> tragedy! <laughs> steps were taken to ensure that this never happened again. <laughs> Whenever he was a kid, he was always known as a wee bit of a problem child. I wonder why. But uh, me aunt actually got this lovely new carpet in. Remember back in the day when everybody got carpet in their living room and all? And he actually had... Um, my my mum said she came in. No, fuck, your carpet's lovely. You know, the, that was back in the day when you went up to somebody's house to have a look at their old new carpet, you know what I mean? And she said... <laughs> that scorched <laughs> into the carpet <laughs> was just... His name, oh, right? fuck. Declan. <laughs> Where he'd stuck the poker repeatedly in the fact. How old was he? He was about 12. <laughs> <laughs> old enough to know better. She says it was just Dacky scorched into the carpet. <laughs> carpet. And he couldn't like even. Like Mark and his head. I mean, why did you do that? Uh, he wrote his name in the carpet with the poker. Like, what the fuck? I remember one time when, when I was a kid, like, just, there was this, like, smell of burning. And everyone was like, what the fuck is that smell? And then went went in on, like, the front room. There was all this water all over the carpet. And we were like, what the fuck's going on here? And my wee brother, he must have been, like, eight or nine. 
and I tried to fucking say he had been playing with matches or something mm. and like set part of the carpet on fire but he tried to, <laughs> to say that he'd made a paper airplane and thrown it across the room and had gone into the fire caught fire and come out and landed on the carpet <laughs> <laughs> like, bollocks do you know it could have happened but that is the type of thing to me that would actually happen and then nobody would ever fucking believe you yeah mm. do you know I what I mean I don't think he was capable of making a paper airplane <laughs> <laughs> That's the part I don't believe, yeah. you stupid fucker. Yeah, stop telling lies. Like, do you ever see... I was actually talking about these kind of situations the other day where, do you know whenever something happens that you know nobody's going to believe it wasn't the way it happened? Do you know what I mean? Like, for example, do you ever see those people that come into the hospital? It's like with, when I'm telling you about your anatomical snuff box. Yeah, like, <laughs> and you go, nah, there's no way, that's not real. Like, do you know people go into the hospital and um, with, like... Uh, one example, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a nurse and she was saying that somebody came in and had a toilet brush stuck up yeah, their arse, yeah. right? And I went, the best about it was, it was a priest, right? Fuck. And um, he said that he went to get something and he fell. And no, actually, sorry, the priest was the potato. The potato got stuck up his bum. This was a different person. <laughs> oh, potato. Yeah, I'm very Irish. At least he's patriotic. Leave him alone. <laughs> he's a good old spot. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyways, somebody said you've never been up a route before, and you know what I mean. But this guy, he got a toilet brush stuck up his bum, and I didn't even know to ask which end. But apparently, he said he was bending down to get something, toilet brush got stuck up his bum. <laughs> That's how it happened. And I went, that was one of those moments where I went, see if that was me, and I genuinely fell on a toilet brush and it got stuck up my arse. I was just go to the hospital and go, I was wanking. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no point in trying to give an innocent every, explanation because nobody's going to believe you. Every fucking nurse in the world has a story about that. Yeah. And, like, yeah. I think they're all true. Like, my yeah. ma, oh. fucking, she was a nurse and she said it happened once. And, Her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just fall. And I remember another nurse that uh, worked in the surgery I worked in saying about a guy coming in with a hairbrush, like, handle end up. Mm-hmm. Stuck up his horse. And he said he was just like, I was naked and I sat down on the sofa and there was a hairbrush. And you're like, I right. Yeah, um, yeah, there was just what's a hairbrush What's the worst thing you've stuck up your horse? A baby. <laughs> 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 Fucking 12 hours later. Do you know what I mean? Had to have my arse and legs sewn on after it all. Yikes. It's terrible. Aye. It's fucking desperate, so it is. Uh, what about you? Mm. I've not really had anything. See the noise that made? That was like the noise that would have made coming out of your mouth. Um, <laughs> no, I just remember being like really badly constipated one time. And I, it's, it's the only time I think I've ever been constipated. I had to take like new medication. Yeah. And I think at the time I must have had like the flu or something and I was taking fucking paracetamol and all sorts. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I went for a shit and it was like... Giving birth. It was stuck. It was like <laughs> a wee bit out, but, <laughs> but like... It was just a monster. And then eventually I could hear the kids downstairs going, are mommy and daddy here? (laughs) Mommy's at work. I'm up here. (laughs) (laughs) Leave me alone like shit in glass. I'll be down in half an hour. Did you hear about the constipated um, accountant? He worked it out with a pencil. Ah, yes. Classic. (laughs) Classic. Yeah, that reminds me of that thing. Dane Cook does a wee bit about... um, the three things that we can all be certain of in life. He goes, we're all going to laugh, we're all going to cry, and we're all going to take painful shits, <laughs> right? And it made me think about, like, how I often, whenever things like that happen to me, I think about, like, people that I admire and go, they've been through this too. Like, I think about Beyonce. I go, she's been on yeah. the toilet before going, I... oh, baby Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like you just imagine them and they're most that that kind of gives me some comfort sometimes. Yeah, like sometimes Jay-Z's it's just it's like hurry the fuck up. Yeah, like sometimes you know the way they say yeah, imagine the audience in their underwear. Bad Zabatelli chicken box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's gone. I've been knowing you since you were ten. <laughs> she is like used to be a big big idol for me, but I was thinking you know the way they say like you picture everybody in their underwear. Sometimes whenever I'm looking out to the audience, I'm just like, he's taken a big shit before. Or she, she's taken a big shit. Do you know what I mean? You just yeah. like go, humanizes people. It really does. Do you ever There's... come up with stories for people? 
Do you ever what? Come up with wee stories for people. Uh, Give yeah. them like a backstory. Yeah. And look at people. I do that I like sitting in an airport or something. Like, yeah. It's just like, that guy's a fucking nonce over there. <laughs> yeah, like get her away from my kids. I have um, to be careful about this one. Yeah. It, uh, there's certain comedians as well that have like, it's almost like a ritual. They have to go for shit before they go on stage. Really? Because of nerves. Oh, wow. Right. So I won't name any names, but I can think of at least two on the yeah. local scene that really? it's like Funny every, t- every gig. We like, had this conversation the other night because um, we were, I was up in that Crumlin gig. It was brilliant. I was on Crumlin United. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here. Crumlin Is Star. That your, no, your Crumlin channel? Star. Crum- no, it was Crumlin United. Oh, football. yeah. Uh, and Crumlin. It was Crumlin Star last night, wasn't it? Oh, was it? I don't know. The that Ardoin one? Have... Oh, yes, the Ardoin one was Crumlin Star uh, with Paddy. Yes. Um, But we were in there and Sean came in. Hagerty. Um, Sean Hagerty, yes. I'm calling him out here. God love him. He turned around to Aisling and he was like, where's the toilet? So after we get off and, the, you know, the the half time was on. I don't know why we're playing football all of a sudden and Crumlin's Crumlin United. Um, he was like, yeah, I had to go to the toilet earlier and Ashley just turned around right away and went, I knew that you had to go for a shit earlier. And Sean looked at her and she, he was like, yeah. And she went, yeah, it was the way you went. Where's the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> With a sense of urgency. <laughs> but he came out, looked for, walked into the toilet. Apparently there was no toilet roll. So we walked back out again, went into the disabled toilet. It wouldn't lock. So we like had to rip the toilet roll out of the disabled toilet and like scamper over to the toilets. But I was like, I love the way guys can just say things like that. Like, guys are allowed to poop. You see what you said about the toilet wouldn't lock. Mates of mine one time were going down to Dublin on the Enterprise train and uh, one of them needed the shit and he went, but the, you know, it's like an electronic button to oh like God, close yeah. and lock the door. But the door wouldn't lock. So we came back down to my mate Adam. was like, Adam, can you just come, like, keep dick while I'm having a shit? You know, the door won't lock and I don't want to. I'm pretty sure that's some sort of mating ritual somewhere. So fucking Adam went up, gave him, like, a minute to get comfortable and then just pressed open and walked off. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be like a prize being revealed. You're just just sitting there having a shit. But that's the thing. The the way the the, the way the carriage was, everyone everyone Ah. that was facing that way could see the toilet Ah. door open. Stars in your eyes. (laughs) Tonight, Matthew, I ain't going to be constipated. Yeah, oh my God. That's one of my, I always have this dream, a reoccurring dream that I'm in a toilet. I need to go to, I need to pee or whatever, but it's usually like I'm going to pee. And all of a sudden, it's like one of those wee sal- saloon doors, you know, like in oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Western, yep. where like everybody, I can see everyone, yeah. <laughs> and they're all just looking at me, and I'm going, will you just leave me alone? <laughs> Why are you just looking at <laughs> That's so random, because my son was telling me about, like, you know, they have the, the junior school toilets at primary school, and like the big boy toilets. Yeah. But he said, for whatever reason, he had to go to like the P1 toilets. He said he was taking his shit, <laughs> and he could just see everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you feel like a Gulliver's Kingdom, you know? That? <laughs> <laughs> I love those wee toilets, so they're adorable. No, just the wee teeny toilets and go. <laughs> There's sometimes, though, when you walk in the toilet and there's three urinals, right? There's two regular adult size urinals. Ah, and, then the, and then there's the wee baby urinals, ah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the two adult urinals are fucking like got the yellow tape on them because they're broke. <laughs> so then you're like, oh, fuck me, the piss in this sweet ten year. And you're like, I have to get down on your squat. knees. <laughs> or Somebody else, comes in, you're just very hot. If you're, not, if you're not squatting, you're getting the fucking splashback. Yeah. <laughs> I never knew about the concept of urinal cake. This was oh. fascinating to me. Like, did those. Do we have them over here? Because I've seen them in American movies where they're like, yeah, I took a piss on this guy's face because it was a urinal. Like, real estate people will get, like, urinal cakes with their face Uh, on it. Over here, it's just like a wee yellow sponge. And what does it do? This soaks up all the... Piss? Aye, but it it has an odour to sort of All the noisome smells of the urinal. Yeah, but... uh, Oh, man. Man, I, there was a fucking sports bar whenever I worked in Dunfermline that had screens in the urinal. So, like, you were literally pissing watching the fucking football. What? Uh, yeah. Get away. I've heard of that 
like them their Wait a minute, get high up off of it. Yeah, this was in, in the it. urinal. Yeah. So you can actually take a piss on the football game. Yeah, exactly. I think oh that was the, my the God. thinking behind it. That is absolutely brilliant. Mm. Like why see, why don't women get that? I'd love to just sit on the toilet and watch I don't know Desperate Housewives or something. Oh, we do. We do. The best toilets ever were in the box in the Odyssey. And it was just you could have spent all night in there because they had like this big area with all these like wee chaise lounges and all these wee funky fucking sofas and we all used to just sit there talking Where was this? shit. In the Odyssey there was like a it was a dance One of the club, clubs. Like a club called the Box and it was next level great crack. But in the men's toilets we have like um a tent. What? Oh, we wee people that give you like a squirt of the perfume and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I remember one night when I lived in Edinburgh. In women's toilets, we just call them new best friends. <laughs> we're we, like, were, yeah, we, were out, we were out for one of my mate's birthdays in Edinburgh one time. And uh, I went, went for a piss and like got talking to the guy and he was from Nigeria. And I was like, all right, I, where are you from, Lagos? And he couldn't believe that I knew Lagos. So I was like, I'm oh, my brother's one of his best mates is from Lagos. Mm-hmm. And I started chatting to him and I was like, so... Is it busy tonight? And he's like, to be honest, I think I'm just going to pack up and get out of here. Because he's like a taxi driver. Is he's it busy? Like, he's like, there's, and then that's what it was like. And then we got on to, because I think Lagos has a Guinness brewery. So we started talking about fucking Guinness and all, and then started talking about the Nigerian football team. And then I was like, here, do you want a pint? And he was like, yep. And then I fucking... He was his best friend. I went to the bar and bought him a pint, but then it was the most awkward, weird situation when I came back to the table and I was just like, all right, guys, this is fucking <laughs> Julius on the family. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, why did you buy a random man you in the toilet? Yeah. Like, like, we're what having, we're what having we're <laughs> This is a lot of Paul Bambushi. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be sitting next to, that's actually my husband's grandfather's name. <laughs> I was uh, going to say Calapo, but that's my brother's friend's name. But, uh, um, yeah, he th- th- he's from Lagos too. Do you say Bambushi or Bambushi? They would say Bambushi, but I think they might say like Bambushi, but... I'm not gonna. But, but yeah, then that would be racist. Even the guy was just standing with his pint, like looking at me, going, "This wasn't a good idea." Yeah. <laughs> is he like this? Is He's like, it's only one more of a chopper chop. Saying <laughs> <laughs> one million. Yeah, that'll be two pound, please. <laughs> I, uh, He's just sitting there with condoms, like for no reason. Going, be safe. <laughs> I went. <laughs> <laughs> I went my stag there in February and um, it was over in Liverpool I was like my mates and our Patrick and then I brought um, a two nephews as well mm. one of our Patrick's kids as well Patrick and he's only 16 and so it was like some of the first night I think he's maybe been out once or twice before Yeah. Like so he hasn't really been out in like clubs or nothing before so he, he went off and was like right I need to go to the toilet went to the toilet and came back and was like like he had the most astounded look on his face he was like there's a man in the toilet <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he was like spraying me with after shaving all his hair and we were going like yeah I love it you came out smelling like a hers handbag with I about know. 50 different fucking perfumes was, on you he just couldn't <laughs> believe it he was just like going like what a bit of juicy food <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like he thought we were gonna be like no way, is there? Yeah. <laughs> so we were yeah. Like, yeah. Welcome yeah. to adulthood. Uh, what about <laughs> it? Did you give him a pound? Don't give him ever hang him a wallet. <laughs> it's fucking... I love it. I know it's a weird and wonderful thing. Madame Le Poupou. In France, they have them and they call them Madame Poupou. Did they? Or Madame, Madame Pipi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because they're the, the wee people said <laughs> in the toilet. I love French food. That's probably racist. Tell me about your, your racist moment. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking off her. Right, so we were talking off her about all the non-racist, apparently racist things. Yeah, fucking... Right, I actually... See that two-pack thing I did, right? Yeah. I used to do that bit, and then Shona was like, mm, it's a bit racist, and I was like, is it? And I don't really fucking thought about it, and then it was Jasmine Sierra mm-hmm. I saw do a bit where she's comparing gingers 
of black people. Right. And I was just like, see, that, that, I, I don't think it was racist. And I went back to show and I was like, I'm going to do that again. I don't think it um, is racist. I thought it was But no, what she fucking accused me of being racist was putting yeah. on the sunglasses and doing the Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder. <laughs> and she's like, that's right. I was like, how the fuck is that racist? <laughs> there, like, have you ever seen, Sean, have you seen the stars in your eyes and it's like... Norwegian stars in your eyes. Oh, it's always blacked up. And the no. woman. But I was just like, she was living in the future back then because she went from, she did Stevie Wonder, part-time lover. <laughs> and she went from obviously this white seeing woman to a black blind man, right? And she went so far as to even get somebody to walk her on the oh, stage, right? <laughs> and she does da 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 <laughs> The whole time I watched it, I was just crying, laughing. Like, is this fucking serious? You know, it's a different time, huh? Did you hear Stevie Wonder gave his wife a cheese grater for Christmas? But a solid, no, she gave him a solid gold cheese grater for Christmas. Oh right. He said it was the best book he ever read. <laughs> it's terrible. Cut that out. <laughs> I just wanted to throw I in my dad that joke. Was going. Yeah, but have you ever seen his wife? Neither she. <laughs> <laughs> I says to my dad before that, because it is a dad's joke, and he went to me, what about Ray Charles, though? Have you ever seen his wife? And I went, no, I nas he, neither is he. And he went, no, she's fucking ugly. <laughs> did you ever, did you ever there he wasn't as well he got and said, well, that's terrible. The Ray Charles uh, biopic. biopic. Yeah. I, I did see it years you ago. Remember, like well, how he used to judge a woman was by her wrist. Oh, to see how fat she yeah, was? Yeah, because like, and he would always be like, and then he would be chatting. <laughs> and there's just one scene where he just takes it. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> that was Mama Cass. <laughs> Mama Cass. I know, imagine like being, I suppose, my my ma's best mate, right? She worked for this blind couple. You know, she would just go in and do like lighthouse keeping and stuff like but that. But live in the lighthouse? Live in the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, fuck off, dude. Just do wee bits and bobs and whatever. They're like that light's blinding. <laughs> I leave, leave all the lights in your house on the wooden fucking note, do you know what I mean? Why's the electric gone up 80% cost living? Um, but she was off work one day and she got on the bus and they were out and they had their car with them. And she said, I just couldn't be fucking annoyed talking to anybody that I knew. So I just thought I'll be really quiet. And they'll not know that I'm here. <laughs> like that's, that's terrible. But it was back in the day whenever... Do you remember you used to put your own ringtone in your phone? But you would tap it like and do it. She had this really distinctive ringtone and it went off. So it was like, angel girl, you're my angel. Da, 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 da. And it was like, is that you? And like they were able to spot her because of her fucking... She went, fuck! Sitting there trying not to... Oh, oh, shit. Yeah, but she... Do you know what she told us? That there... Their, her bathroom would be really noisome because um, when it, she would go into it and there would just be shit all over the wall. Oh, man. Like, I'm not saying that all, bl obviously, the blind people can look after themselves and stuff, but I don't know whether or not they just got lazy because they had somebody to come in to claim there would just be shit. Maybe oh. it was a protest. Maybe it was a protest. Maybe. It may have been a kinky thing. It may have been. What do you call the kink? The dirty word when people oh, are into playing. Scatophilia. Scatophilia or coprophilia. Do you want to hear? Scatophilia. I'm a sc I'll never listen to that song. I'm a shit in these bottles, right? <laughs> I'm a shit in these. <laughs> Smell my pouch of Douglas. <laughs> Do you want to hear the dirty word yes, of the week? Always. Always. I've gotten to the stage now where it's just right. Hybristophilia? Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Do you have any idea what it is? It's people that get sexually aroused by French. Bistros? Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Hebristophilia. Sounds very like gravy. That does actually I sound. Did. It's all gravy. But no, that's that's coprophilia after you've had a big curry. Um, Hebristophilia is actually somebody who is turned on by criminals. Ah. Usually by like people who are imprisoned for really right. sort of extreme yeah. crimes. Yeah. Or is it. Uh, no, the way like Manson, obviously. Yes. Aye. And then your man, the Night Ted Stalker. Bundy. Jeffrey Dahmer as well. Jeffrey Dahmer, mm -hmm. Ted Bundy, the Night Stalker. No, like people 
like we're like fucking obsessed with him. Carol Boone actually sat through Ted Bundy's trial and then married him. They got married. I think they actually had a kid together. They ended up. He was allowed like a conjugal visit, and she. But apparently, whenever I was looking into it, right, the psychology of it is that they feel because I was making a joke going at least they can say they always know where their man is at night do you know what I mean like they're going I fucking know where he is he's in bed every night by 8 o'clock do you know what I mean but psychologists actually theorise that that's a thing that they like the security of it of knowing where their partner is right, at all times right. they don't have they're always getting them on their best behaviour because obviously if they act out A they'll get put in segregation or get a hiding they'll, they'll not be allowed to they'll not come back to visit them and they like being the person that they're dependent on and they also like the attention you know of like being next to somebody so sort of nefarious or like somebody who's like infamous do you know what I mean yeah. like look at Branson as well he has he, yeah. He has a fiance. Aye. You know, I just kind of go. I just think that it's the epitome of daddy issues. Like, I can change him. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. So it's what? Have he raped and murdered nineteen women? Yeah, I can change him. It's, he's he's not the best behaved, but he's alright. He's, he's alright. He can, you know, he's a wee bit heavy handed, and you know, <laughs> that sort of shit. It yeah. just fucking fascinates well, that, me. Uh, does that happen? Male and female, do you think? I would. That's just called being married in the seventies. <laughs> do you know what I mean? She's not fucking getting out of that house whether you like her or not. I don't care. She's in labour. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can oh. come and take it out of her. I thought you meant like. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Long visit your partner up in long cares. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I meant. That yeah. was being married in the seventies. No, but did you think men would write the female prisoners? You always hear the other way around, like. Uh, back to her bristophilia. You might say that they're already fucked, but this is women that actually want to fuck them. Who do you think is the sexiest criminal? Oh. Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> He's a war criminal. Who do you think is the sexiest criminal? Mm. God. My ex-boyfriend. <laughs> um... I'm trying to think of a female one though. Of a woman? Yeah, who's a rascal. But any women that you would know, or any men we know, are sort of like notorious for being like big pedophiles or rapists or whatever. Branson actually wouldn't be that bad because he was in jail for something like fucking robbery or burglary or something. He just got kept in so long. Forever. Because of being Jerry Adams. Crazy. Jerry Adams, there we go. Never have I ever seen a more handsome man. Yeah, with teeth like Shargar. <laughs> uh. Big Jerry. He's a hottie. Yeah. Fucking right. Nah, I wouldn't write him in the battle. What is that? Because he's ancient as well. It'd probably fucking melt in my mouth. <laughs> he looks mental now. With his fucking long hair and his wee professor of sociology specs. Oh, does he? Mm. I haven't seen him in years. Last time I seen him, he was coming out of a book. with a, with a, Coming out of a bush. Coming out of a bush. Coming out of a book. Coming out of a, a bush with a cookbook in his hand. What is he? That video is. Does he say good morning to the bush or something? Uh, he does. He, he like talks bush. to the bush. Yeah. Man, yeah. The yeah. negotiator's cookbook. <laughs> um, he done a video recently, you know, like uh, the group Kneecap. Yeah. yeah. So um, when they were doing like a wee promo for their like fila mm-hmm. gig. Yeah. And they got Jerry Adams to like promote it. So it's them free, no like sitting there, and Kneecap is obviously Mowgli Bob, like um, Makara and DJ Provy. Mm. So they're like, Jerry, thank you very much for doing this for us. We got to be present, and like, in the hand of like a bottle of Buckfast. Mm-hmm. And it goes, grab me now, I'll get DJ Provy. No, like, <laughs> 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 Just dead serious, like Gourmet Le Mile, but DJ broke it. I went out in Lavery's where I convinced you you'd leaked on the way, <laughs> on the way off the stage. He's a bastard. He did do this on me. She has a bit about, like, you know, everything downstairs getting destroyed after giving birth so many times and mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. having leakage. Mm-hmm. But she came off stage, but I'd watch the guy walk up with like four pints and spill it. And I was like, here, you fucking dribbled all the way down there. Uh, she, he actually went to me, did you? Uh... <laughs> I was like, I actually saw you do we check. I went, 
did I just have an oops moment? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I looked and went, oh, and I actually did see the wee, you know, the, the we spell trickled? marks the yeah. whole way from the stage, and I went... <laughs> Get them and up. He went to me, I'm only joking here, but I'm fuck you! <laughs> you bastard. Do you know what? I'm actually not that bad, but for a minute I thought, that's it, that's it over for me. Like, I, I am officially a Tamil lady. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, fucking, but it was from everybody else wet themselves laughing at me. Do you have anything coming up that uh, you would like to promote? Arma on Saturday. Arma on yeah. this evening. It's the Marketplace yeah. Theatre on Saturday. Me, you, Luke my Gibbon. And Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan. That should be a belter. Yeah, it, sh- it is. It's going to be a cracker, actually. Yeah. Marketplace Theatre on Arma this Saturday. And then I have to get round straight after and do that other gig at the Moy. The Moy, which will be great crack. And also, if Moy you're watching, girl. go to the Mela on, well, you'll not be able to go this day because it's Saturday, but on Sunday, the Mela, I'll be on stage having a laugh with the audience. In Botanic? Well. In Botanic, yeah. I might try and get Mela down to that. Mela and Fubble. <laughs> I fucking love it. Yes, put that Isn't out that there. Mela? I say Mela. Is it because I'm Irish and I, I'm mm-hmm. used to Fela? Yeah. Is it? I, I Anyways, it the mail and fubble people. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is that? I think that's all I've got to promote. Is that it? That's dead on. Other yeah. than the Thompson brand. The Thompson brand. Follow me. Indeed. At it. Ian Thompson, etc. Yeah. You just have to finish it out by singing perennium. All right. <laughs> <laughs> perennium. <laughs> I love it.